Hey everyone, this is Scott from CertMedia.com, and in this video I'm going to be covering SSL Insecure Content Fixer. I'm going to be going over the settings of what each one does, the recommended settings you should be using, and I'm going to be discussing what this plugin actually does because there's a bit of confusion around it. So SSL Insecure Content Fixer is supposed to help fix mi mixed content errors. For those of you who don't know, a mixed content error is when you convert your site to SSL and you may notice that there's not that green little padlock. So right here, as you can see, I have this little padlock. And as you can see here, I have the little padlock. If you don't see the padlock, either it's grayed out or it's broken, what that means is you're serving an asset over HTTP instead of HTTPS. And that can cause issues because it breaks the encryption. So if you're using like, if it's a JavaScript file, for instance, that's not being served over HTTPS, the browser will refuse to deliver it. If it's something like an image, it may break the encryption sign here, but it can still serve the image. Now these rules are going to be tightened eventually by browsers and they're gonna start being a little bit more restrictive on what assets are actually allowed to be delivered when you run into an asset that's being served as mixed content. If you're using a WordPress website and you either don't know how to manage the database, you don't wanna do a search and replace, and you just wanna install a plugin because your host provided you a free SSL. I did a video on really simple SSL that can make that process fairly easy. However, even when you're using something like really simple SSL, sometimes content can still scrape by that's not being served from HTTPS. That's where this plugin comes into the mix. So when you first install it, it will go ahead and keep, it, keep itself on the simple mode. So it's a fast, quick mode that makes sure all registered and then queued assets are served over HTTPS and that most images are also covered. Now, this is what you're gonna start off with and almost always, if you're using something like really simple SSL, this will not solve your mixed content errors. Typically, you need to start bumping it up to at least the widgets issue. So what this does is when you bump from here to the content, it will also check for text widgets and resources in the page content. So if you have maybe something like Visual Composer installed, this will check resources in there on the content mode to make sure that it's also being served over SSL. And if you're using a text widget, whether it's for an image in your sidebar or maybe some kind of resource, maybe like a uh, YouTube or a YouTube embed or a Facebook iframe embed, this can help solve issues with that. If you still find that you're not getting a green padlock, you're slowly just gonna progress your way up. Then you're gonna go to the widgets and the widgets does exactly the same thing, but for all widgets. Capture will actually capture the whole page and try to find all content on the page and make sure that it's being served from HTTPS. The only thing that's excluded is Ajax calls, so a admin Ajax, or if a plugin or a theme registers its own Ajax request. And that's done to prevent performance and compatibility issues. Capture All basically includes everything that's in the regular capture, but also handles Ajax requests. You're typically never gonna run into an issue where your Ajax request is the issue. This being said, the reason that it warns you about performance issues is because this is being done dynamically on every page load, if you're not serving it as cached, you're basically taking the whole HTML of the page before it's sent to the browser, the server is going through, it's checking all the content and making sure that it's being rewritten to be HTTPS. This is not the most efficient way of doing this. Obviously the proper way is to have a proper SSL installed and then it's migrated and the assets are rewritten properly. However, if for some reason you just didn't, you didn't do that or you didn't have somebody who could take care of that for you, then it's best that you use something that you can use because if you try to use a better search and replace and go through the database, there will be a video on that. On it, but you can run all sorts of issues and I see it all the time where they try to install it themselves and then they need me to go through and fix the database that they've just completely blown up and naturally there's no backup to fall back on. So this is a great plugin if you're not tech savvy and you have to get your SSL set up. Just make sure you're using some kind of caching layer, page caching, or if you're on a host like SiteGround or Cloudways and they have a caching system in place already, you should be fine. Then you have the fix for specific plugins and themes. Uh, category posts with pagination can sometimes get mixed up. 
Normally, if you have your HTTPS declared under the general settings, then it should be totally fine. However, this option can help solve additional issues. And you typically don't need to enable WooCommerce and Google Chrome HTTPS bug anymore because it's been solved ever since version three plus of WooCommerce. And then it, you can choose to ignore external sites. Now, here is the issue with this option. Typically, if the resource is coming from another website and is being served over HTTP instead of HTTPS, normally that gets pretty well blocked just immediately, especially if it's an iframe or it's an embed or if it's some kind of CSS or JS that's being delivered. It normally just gets blocked all, all together. So I do recommend that you are rewriting assets like this. However, sometimes depending on your page builder, you may have some really weird issues that occur. Um, sometimes if you're using Elementor, for instance, it may rewrite certain assets that are supposed to be over HTTP instead of HTTPS. You mostly see this with something like, a, like inline SVGs. This, it just causes all sorts of weird issues. So if you do notice that you have enabled this plugin and you're getting some sort of broken feature, whether it's a page builder or something else, go ahead and check this option and it might help. If it still doesn't help, then you might need to contact a developer or your host or just have the redirect done correctly. And again, there'll be a video done on that in the future. For HTTPS detection, this is the method that detects it. So the standard WordPress function is when you have the HTTPS declared in your general settings. As you can see, this URL is HTTPS staging two, HTTPS staging two. That's the correct URL. This is how it will detect it. Now, if you're using something like Nginx, you can do HTTPS forwarded, and this will show you the recommended setting that it detects. You can, if you're using Cloudflare flexible SSL, you can use the HTTP, the HTTP CF visitor, but it's still best to use X forwarded proto because that's what Cloudflare supports now. I, again, most of the time, just go ahead and leave it at standard and it will work totally fine. And if you're using something like really simple SSL, it takes care of all of this without you even needing to touch it. So again, this plugin is really there for those who are not technically inclined enough to go ahead and resolve the issues themselves and to do a manual migration to HTTPS that, however, if you are of that level of technical, technical understanding, I wouldn't recommend using this plugin. It adds quite a bit of overhead, especially on larger, more complicated websites. And if you ever have access to your own VPS, whether it's on Cloudways or you have your own server somewhere that you're renting off of, you can actually see the difference of processing that goes from using something like this instead of just doing it correctly in the first place. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to ask below and I'll try to help you out. But for most websites, I still recommend you just get the proper redirects done in the first place and you either pay somebody X amount that they'll charge. That way you don't have to use this plugin. It's just going to cause you headache down the line, especially if you want to use if you want to migrate to a host and get better performance out of them, they may blacklist it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.